In this video, I took the most powerful 8-inch subwoofers by Sundown Audio and Scar Audio. And if you would like to know what they look like in an open air bench test, stick around. We got that and more coming right up. What is going on guys? It's the Budget Bass here. Welcome back to the channel. Right now what you guys are looking at is the 8 inch subwoofer leaderboard. The leaderboard does consist of four different categories. We have the $100 category, the $150 category, the $200 category, and the $300 category. Right now what we're going to be doing is focusing on the subwoofers in the $150 category and in a $300 category. First up is the Scar Audio ZVX8. I did pick this up for $170 over at Scar's website. It has a max power rating of 1100 watts, an RMS power rating of 900 watts. This is a dual 2 ohm configuration and it has a 2.5 inch voice coil. The Sundown Audio X8 I picked up over at a yard sale on Sundown's uh, website. This does retail for $290. It has an RMS power rating of 800 watts, two and a half inch voice coil, and this is also a dual two configuration. Right now, what I would like to do is welcome you guys here if you are new to the channel and you like DIY builds, comparisons and competitions, please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Right now what we're going to be doing is a complete unboxing of both these subwoofers and then later on we're going to be moving on to the bench test. So for all the more experienced guys, if you've seen unboxings of these speakers before, please be respectful to the new guys. I will not cheat them out of this experience. Some guys would like to know what comes inside these boxes and that's what my job is here on the channel. So first up, you do have the Scar Audio ZVX coming in dual box that this, I got this actually dual box. I ordered the ZVX and I also ordered another one. They came dual box. First up, you get the user manual. This is very important for anyone who wanna do a DIY build on their box, on their speakers. They have all the proper parameters to do that. You also get a Scar Audio sticker. Very nice to have. I always warn guys, be careful the neighborhoods you go in and you got these stickers displayed. Somebody would really, really, really like to have what you have in some cases. Okay, we see right here that Scar did do their due diligences by putting some protective liner there with the molded exterior for the speaker. That's added protection during shipping. That's very, very nice to see. This subwoofer have an FS rating of 41 hertz, an R, <clears throat> I'm sorry, a QMS rating of 30 of 3.6, a QTS rating of 0.76, which is more sealed friendly than ported by rule of thumb, that is. This is what the box look like on the inside. And this guy's kind of heavy. Y'all seen what I just had to do. It's, it's quite heavy because of the motor on it. You guys are going to see that in a minute. But just know that all of the packaging there is molded for this subwoofer. Very tight fit. And that's what you want to see from a manufacturer that's shipping a product such as this. And there's a better look at it. This little guy has an X Max of 14 millimeters, believe it or not, on an 8. This is a, a competition cone material. Once again, two and a half inch dual two arm configuration. It does have a copper voice coil. And look at that magnet, 156 ounces of ferrite magnet. Very, very beefy. Once again, we do have protective lining on here, the plastic, really nice to see. That protects it from the elements during shipping, dust, moisture, things of that nature. Always great to see that plastic. And this is what it looks like. 
Next up, what we're gonna be doing is getting a better look at the coil, the basket, and the terminals. This little guy is sitting pretty stout right here. I'm really liking the stance on it. And if you guys look at the basket there, you see how wide those spokes are. Despite it only being four of them, this is a little guy, he's an eight. And they are very, very wide. Plenty of contact to the basket. I really do like seeing that. Right now, what I'm gonna be doing is giving you guys a close up of the voice coil. Once again, this is a high temperature copper voice coil flat wound believe it or not flat wound give you better better uh surface to surface contact when you're doing your woundings on your um your voice coils very nice to see that so scar didn't skimp out on this build nice push terminals here i would say easily you should be able to get some 10 gauge in there I'm going to be using banana plugs later on with 10 gauge wiring, but I don't see a problem with that. Tinsel leads look beefy enough for 900 watts. I've seen smaller on subwoofers that was rated twice the power of this. So that's pretty good to see. They are sewn into the spider. Very nice. With glue. Good job, Scar. Once again, the basket is a um, high gloss finish. It's a signature look by Scar Audio. Push terminals look exceptionally well to me. Well mounted, I don't think you'll have an issue with those breaking off or becoming loose. And yeah, I think that looks pretty great in my, in my opinion. Next up, what we're gonna be doing is getting a better look at the surround and cone of the subwoofer. Once again, as stated previously in another video, I just love the look of these beefy surrounds on these little bitty guys. Not only do they they assist with the um, or not only do they give you a an ideal of the X Max or mechanical excursion of these little guys, it just gives them an overall appearance that's very very aggressive. You do have dual stitching that's always good to see, and something with this much power going to be thrown through it. Plus it's glue and has a signature. Uh, uh, logo by Scar Audio. High gloss finish on the dust cap. And this is a foam surround, not rubber. Nice. I think anyone would say that that is a high roll surround as well. Next step, what we're going to be looking at is the uh, is the magnet. But first, we got to get the boot off this thing. And yes, it was kind of hard getting this thing off. I struggled <laughs> quite a while. Uh, trying to get this thing off, it was on pretty good. Don't want to cheat you out of that experience, so let me bag it up for you. And it's coming. There we go. 156 ounces of ferrite motor. Very, very impressive for an 8 inch subwoofer. Give you guys a little bit of a close up of this. That is three massive slugs on this 8 inch subwoofer. I've seen 15 inch subwoofers, 18 inch subwoofers that didn't have magnets like this. But there it is on an eight. Very, very impressive. Once again, this is the Scar Audio ZVX8 dual two ohm configuration coming in at 900 watts RMS. Plenty of venting for the pole vent and the voice coil. High gloss chrome finish, very, very beautiful. That's another look at that spider, the underside of it anyway. Very stiff suspension. So if you guys wanna know the, what the reputation of these guys come from, it's all about the suspension and the motor. Okay? You're talking about QMS and you're talking about QES. QES is the electrical suspension of the subwoofer. QMS is the mechanical suspension of the subwoofer and this one here didn't skimp out on any of that it's massively built and constructed so that'll do it for the zvx8 by scar audio that'll do it for the unboxing next up will be the unboxing of i'm sorry it'll be the bench test of this subwoofer this is the zvx8 dual tube once again coming in at 900 watts rms 
On the bench, I have the Dayton Audio SA-1000, which is a server, I'm sorry, which is a rack amplifier, a home amplifier. I'll be routing my sound source through this Samsung tablet right here. And just giving you guys a layout of the setup. This amplifier is rated at 1000 watts. You get, I have it on the bench actually wired, uh, have the gain set at 800 watts. Right now what we're gonna do is wire this guy up. The amplifier, the SA-1000 is only stable at four ohms. That's the lowest that it can go. So I gotta wire this dual two ohm configuration subwoofer in series and that'll bring the ohm load up to four ohms. That'll make it stable for my home amplifier. As you guys see here, I am utilizing banana plugs to do this. Very, very convenient for this type of thing. This is 10 gauge wire from Sky High Audio. I've had this wire about uh, four or five years, I believe. Just a thumb up from the budget base head. And right now what we're gonna be doing is a bass sweep from 150 hertz. Get y'all got some volume down to 20 hertz. And that's 20 hertz. Not too shabby for an 8 inch subwoofer. And I misspoke earlier. I said that this I, I was giving this guy uh, 500 watts. I'm actually giving it around 800 watts. And it is peaking in some places at 1,000 watts. And this is what it looks like. Not too shabby for an 8 inch subwoofer, in my opinion. It did very, very well. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Was this impressive for you or not? In the meanwhile, we're gonna be moving on to the unboxing of the Sundown Audio X8. Let me get y'all stats pulled up right quick. Once again, I picked this guy up over at a Sundown Audio yard sale. If you guys are not familiar with the yard sale, it's pretty much uh, Sundown's way of, of giving, you know, anyone a discount on subwoofer items in which you probably normally couldn't afford, right? For whatever the reason, like me. But anyway, uh, some of these subwoofers doing testing just don't make it, you know, as far as like uh, cosmetics, it can be something small like cosmetics that can cause it. It can be something uh, mechanically wrong with it, uh, electrically wrong with it, that you know the normal viewer or the normal user wouldn't even notice, but the testers notice it and they don't see it fit for resale. So what they would do, they would put it in a yard sale and let you have it at a discount. This is one of those items and trust me, this item is fully functional. Uh, I wouldn't know the difference to be honest with you. All the magnets were charged. Everything looked great. So I picked it up at the yard sale for a huge discount and I'm bringing it to you guys that have never seen it before. So first up, it did come dual boxed. Always great to see that. <clears throat> and it did come with this styrofoam right here molded to the uh, form of the subwoofer. And look at there, I got a sticker. Once again, be careful what neighborhoods you post these stickers in your windows, okay? Lose a little bit of common sense. I know you're happy you got your stuff, you want people to know, but some people may really like your stuff. <laughs> a little bit too much. Once again, there's a closer look at that mold uh, styrofoam from Sundown. Pretty, uh, pretty good job, in my opinion. It protects the way it's supposed to. Kudos to Sundown for wrapping this guy in plastic. Once again, this protects from the element. 
in case something happens to the exterior packaging, like the box get a hole poked in it or whatever, you actually have some protection from things such as that. And man, look at that. This little guy is tall. So tall to be an eight inch woofer, but you guys see, wow, look at the, the spider landing on this thing is about as big as the, the diameter of the car, the, the speaker itself, which is impressive in my opinion. Give you guys a closer look at that. Look at the little guy, man. High row surround. You got the, uh, the raised lettering on the boot and on the surround looks very, very nice. Plenty of venting in the basket. Always great to see that. Give you guys another once over of that. This is a two and a half inch voice coil. Uh, aluminum, by the way. Have a red spider here. You usually see these red spiders on Scars product. They're the ones who's known for the red. And there's a look at the push terminals. Push terminals on here. I initially said 10 gauge, but I don't know. It looks like he may be able to fit eight in there. And they went with a different style of tensile leads than the Scar did. Scar had round, round uh, tensile leads. This one here has flat woven tensile leads also sewn into the spider. Very nice to see. Once again, high roll surround. Have a chrome finish on it. This little guy is handsome. Right now, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit closer view of that cone and surround. Very, very high roll surround it is for long throw. This little guy here has a QTS, QTS rating of 0.4. I know some people may think that's very, very high, but it is an eight inch subwoofer with very stiff suspension. Once again, it has dual stitching as well, as well as the scar did. Always nice to see that. And this is also a foam surround, not rubber. They did not go with a high gloss finish on their dust cap as Scar did, but nice looking dust cap nonetheless. Sensitivity, check this out, 80 dB. <laughs> That's very, very low sensitivity, but hey, we do expect to have to put some power through this little guy. So no biggie on that, but the sensitivity on the Scar was much better than that. Right now, I'm giving you guys a look at the magnet. And they have extensive venting here on this guy. And they even got the uh, name engraved and version. Pretty, pretty cool by my, <clears throat> by my taste. I love this. Chrome finish. Big old butt. I like it. There's an even closer look at that venting. They didn't skimp out on this guy right here. As a matter of fact, the uh, the SA8 have a similar uh, construction here, but minus the pole vent. I don't know why they didn't put a pole vent on the SA, but they put one here on this one, which is quite impressive. And I'm happy to see. And right now, I want you guys to get another look at the, uh, the magnet, the same as we did on the SCAR. The SCAR had a three inch uh, I'm sorry, I had a three stack slug, three three stacks of um, ferrite motor. Sorry about that. Don't want to cheat you guys out of that. And here we go, pretty much the same here. Nice. This thing is nice. So if you guys are wondering where all that reputation come from, here we go. Has an FS of 46 hertz. BL of 18, CMS rating of 72. Not too shabby. We're gonna be moving on to the bench test. And as you guys can see, this is a closer look up of the Dayton Audio SA1000. This is not some cheap amplifier. This thing put out clean power. This is class AB technology. A lot of audio enthusiasts Enthusiasts would prefer the AB technology over the D, believe it or not. And once again, going to be routing this through my tablet. I'm going to be using a uh, some RCA cables to uh, mail 3.5 millimeter head jack to do that. And that's the star of the show, the Sundown X8 Dual 2 ohm 
All right, first up, you know we gotta get this thing powered up, so that's the low frequency channel. Like I stated earlier, we're gonna be using a RCA to headphone jack connection to the tablet. This is how we get things connected. Next up, what we're gonna be doing is wiring. I did pick up some new wiring over there, SCAR Audio as well. High flex cable, really digging this stuff. Banana plugs once again coming in handy for this test. Once again, this subwoofer amplifier is rated at a thousand watts, but I have I'm gonna have it my gain set at around 800 watts or so, and that's what I'm gonna be using. Uh, I'm gonna be using this device right here to do that. This is an oscilloscope, and it does have a graph on it to allow you to actually set your gains properly. It comes, it really does come in handy for these type of deals. So basically what you do, you get a test tone at this point, I mean in this example, we're gonna get a 40 hertz test tone going through from the tablet through the amplifier, and we're gonna adjust the gains from there. And what I'm looking for is around 50 something hertz, I think it's 56 hertz, once again 40 hertz test tone. And we're gonna be setting our gains from here. Once you push play here, you're gonna adjust the gains until the voltage change to your desired level. And then we're gonna hold that button in order to graph everything. Right now it's very low voltage at 21 volts. And we're gonna get it up to about 800 or so. Get this guy wired up. Once again, in series, the same as what we did with the SCAR. And we're gonna be giving this guy a bass sweep from 120 hertz down, I mean 150 to, to 20 hertz. Mm. and that's 20 hertz. Gets a thumb up from the budget bass head. I like the way this little guy moves. Look at him. <laughs> Not too shabby in my opinion. We're gonna give that another go. What I did for you guys, I adjusted the power a little bit more and put actually a thousand on him. I just felt as though he can take a little bit more. So let's give it another go. 1,000 watts, this is extra 200 watts. Will it make a difference? And there you go, 1,000 watts wide open. This little guy is impressive. I must say, guys, I'm not trying to be unfair to the SCAR uh, in these tests that I'm running right now, but I must be honest and say that this speaker right here can handle the power. I'm not saying that the SCAR couldn't handle the power, but I gotta be honest with you guys, in my opinions with these things, I used to didn't do this, but you guys requested that I do this, so I'm gonna be doing this. The SCAR Audio took the 800 watts wide open with no problem, but I did feel as though if I would have pushed it a little bit more, that it would not have been able 
to uh, to handle it because I did begin to smell the scar. Now, keep in mind that outgassing is normal process of breaking in a subwoofer. You heat them up for the first time, you're gonna smell them a bit. However, with this guy right here, it didn't even get warm on the first test. So I said, well, let me throw a thousand, a full thousand watts at it and see what it behaves like. And this thing took it like a champ. I'm not telling you to do this to your subwoofers, okay? But this is what I'm bringing to you guys just, you know, for the experience and whatnot to kind of assist you with making a better purchasing decision. So what do you guys think about all of this? Do you guys think that these subwoofers are worth the money in which you have to pay for them? Do you guys believe that? So if you think about this, you have a $120 difference here. The Sundown Audio X8 coming in at nearly 300 bucks, okay? The Scar Audio ZVX8 is coming in at 20 bucks cheaper than that. $120 cheaper than that. So from what you just seen on the bench, do you believe that the Sundown Audio X8 is worth twice the price? I'm not gonna say twice the price, but would you rather have one of these guys and spend an extra $120, or would you rather spend that money toward another ZVX8? I don't know, it's up to you guys. Just I just asked the questions. I'm gonna do a poll after this and let you guys decide what do you think? I just want to see what the polls reflect, and I will be bringing that result in the next box test that I do with these two little guys. So we got an SPL meter that I picked up at SPL Labs. We're going to be metering these guys, and we're going to allow you to make an even better purchase and decision. That's what we do over here at this channel. But anyway, that's enough for now. Once again, for all the new guys, if you like car audio DIY bills, comparisons and competitions, please consider clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.